Hello, this is Miss Sonia again to teach you about the violin. The violin is a feat of human engineering. There are no screws, nails, or clamps holding this together. It's all held together with glue, friction, or tension. Pretty cool feat of human engineering. It's all physics. Today we're going to go over how to hold your instrument, make sure you're in tune, a little bit about how to care for your instrument, review our strings, and our first song. At the end of this lesson, I'm also going to go over the bow hole, so be ready. Let's get our instruments ready. First, we need to put on our shoulder rest. Remember, it should make the shape of a frown. I always hook mine on one side first and then slide it up the other. If it makes a slight frown shape, then it'll be in the correct orientation to fit comfortably on your shoulder. Before we play, let's make sure we're in tune. So listen really carefully, trust your ears, and see if your strings sound the same as mine. If they don't, you can go to our tuning video and practice tuning your instrument. Starting with the highest string, the thinnest one, this is E. Now you play. Does it sound the same? Let's move on to A. String number two is A. If it's the same, move on to D. Number three, D. And lastly, G. Number four, G. If your strings sound the same as mine, you're ready to keep going. If they're different, then you want to go tune your instrument before you start playing the Each and Every Ant song with me. When we hold our instrument, we need to remember to make sure that it's parallel with the floor. Straight left wrist, there should be one single straight line from your knuckles all the way to your elbow. Notice that I'm holding the neck in between this big knuckle here and my thumb, not clamping tightly. So just like it, it would be my own neck, I hold it delicately. Let's go over each and every ant song. Each string we're going to play four times. Follow along with me and I'll count us in and I'll sing along. You can sing along with me too if you want to. One, two, ready, play. Each, 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 each and every ant, 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 digging in the dirt. So now I'm going to play the strings in a random order and I want you to try and figure out what string I'm playing and you can play it after me. So listen closely. See if you can figure out what that string is and play it. That was A. A, A. Now I'm going to do that again. Listen carefully. That's the D string. D, D, D. Now I'm going to play four beats, random strings, and you can copy after me. One, two, listen first. D, D, A, A. G, D. to and play anytime. Let's review and go over bow hold. To begin, you need to have a pencil. It has to be an actual pencil that has edges on it. Go find yourself a pencil, pause the video, and come back. I have a fun little story for your bow hold. You probably know about Quiet Coyote. So, we're going to start with Quiet Coyote. Quiet Coyote likes to watch the rabbit. So find yourself a rabbit. It's close to Quiet Coyote, but instead we have rabbit teeth and soft floppy ears. Rabbit was playing in the field of clover, munch, munch, munching on the clover flowers. Then rabbit got sleepy and decided to take a nap. Make sure your rabbit takes a nap, flops over, take a nap. In the, in, while it's napping, in its dreams, rabbit dreams about Quiet Coyote watching her and her ear twitches. See this ear twitching? So we're going to do that same story but with the pencil in the middle. So I'm going to hold the pencil horizontally and you can follow along. So here is Quiet Coyote. And then from here we're going to find 
rabbit. So make sure your thumb is bent, you got those rabbit teeth hanging over, hanging over the pencil, and you have one floppy ear over here and one floppy ear over here, okay? So here's rabbit, munch, 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 munching on the clover. And you should be able to munch, 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 munch with the pencil, just like that. Now make sure your rabbit, after it's had plenty to eat, it's got a full belly, takes a nap. Rabbit, oh, flops over, sleepy, takes a nap. And then it's dreams, its ear is twitching. So notice there's a soft round spot on the inside of my hand. My thumb is curved and all these three fingers wrap around the pencil and my pinky tip is on the side here and my thumb tip is on the edge, one of the edges of the pencil. So it's really important to use an actual pencil so you can feel that edge. Let's try that together. Quiet coyote. Rabbit. Munch, munch, munch. Sleepy rabbit takes a nap and dreams about quiet coyote, okay? This is our bow hold and it feels really uncomfortable at first because there's nothing in everyday life that we hold like we hold our bow. But it's really important to use this exact bow hold and keep it soft and relaxed. If you want to, practice your bow hold after you found it. Before we go to the bow, you can take your pencil and a penny or any kind of coin. I have a one cent Canadian coin and you can put that on an unsharpened pencil or on an unused eraser and you can practice and see how long you can hold it there without it falling. You can practice lengthening and flexing your fingers. Lengthen and flex and you can practice moving your wrist and so side to side, side to side, up and down, up and down. And you can even practice big motions with your arm. Make sure that pencil stays straight up and down so that coin, penny, dime, nickel doesn't fall off. Okay. See how long you can do that and time yourself. If you have a sibling or a friend who you can play this game with, you can see who can hold that penny on there the longest. Now I'm going to show you how to hold the bow with that same bow hold that we just learned. But before we do that, we need to go over a couple of things. First, I'd like to start with parts of the bow. This is the tip of the bow. This is called the stick. Down here we have the winding, the frog. Here's the eye of the frog. This is called the ferrule, the metal ferrule. This is our winding screw, this is for tightening or loosening, the bow hair, which is made out of horse hair. So we turn the winding screw righty-tighty to tighten it just until the very middle of the bow is wide enough to fit a pencil. Pencils are very useful. When we hold the bow to start, we want to start with our bow horizontal. Now if you notice, this part of your bow is shaped like your pencil with sides on it. It's an octagon. So we're gonna start with quiet coyote. Quiet coyote looks like this. And then we're gonna find rabbit. So make sure your thumb finds a side of the bow that's right in front of the frog's mouth. We don't ever wanna put our thumb inside the frog's mouth because then it gets stuck. Everybody knows that frogs' mouths are sticky, right? Make sure you're on this part, this little wooden part of the stick of the bow in between the winding and your frog. You might have a winding that's moved or is really close to your frog. Still try to find a spot right in front of the frog's mouth. So here we are with our rabbit and then put that rabbit to sleep. Let it take a nap. And here in its dreams, its little ear twitches. Whenever you put your bow away, you must be sure to loosen it. Another really important thing about your bow hair is you never want to touch it to your skin. So do your very best never to touch your bow hair to your skin. Sometimes near the frog, we have to touch the bow with our skin and that just happens naturally. And you'll notice when the oil gets on your bow, it becomes discolored. That's from my skin, that's from my thumb. If you get too much oil on your bow from your skin, it gets really slippery and super squeaky and it won't make a nice sound. So it's important to try and, and protect your bow hair from touching any part of your body. Don't touch it to your face. Don't touch it to your skin of your hand. Just be really careful about that. Another very special thing that we put on our bow is rosin. Does anybody know what rosin's made out of? If you said 
tree sap, you're correct. I have a nice little golden piece of rosin here. Notice that it's hard and shi a little bit shiny and you can kind of see the light through it. This is tree sap, specially hardened. Now it's important to put that on our horse hair of our bows so that our bows can make a lot of sound on our string. So it allows it, there to be a lot of friction, which is another physics term. Lots of engineering that goes into playing your stringed instrument. So here I am rosining my bow. Notice I hold the rosin straight and I take the bow and I move it up and down. This is good practice for your proper bow hold. From here, straight all the way down and all the way up, all the way down and all the way up. You might need to put a little extra close to the frog and a little extra close to the tip. Now, a bow without any rosin on it just slips across the strings and doesn't make any sound. That's it for today for lesson three. So be sure to loosen your bow when you're done playing and put it away.